on this one too. Hello, this is Donita. You may hear birds in the background, my husband on the tractor, the children playing with the dogs, or the fans running because it's incredibly hot in Oklahoma right now. This is Real Life on the Prairie with Donita Fogelman of prairiedusttrail.com, weathering the dust storms of life with God's divine help. And I have with me, Catherine, used to be Fogelman, turned coat white. Um, <laughs> And we have with us today, the homeschooling dietitian, Debbie Canyon. Uh, I'm really excited to visit with her today about menu planning. And you have a new thing and I've actually got hooked up with, uh, this is Living Plate RX, is that what it is? Yes. Yes. And this is just a really neat, uh, menu planning thing and my idea of menu planning is usually like meatloaf Monday, taco tuesday whatever wednesday and that type of thing and we're just very very fluid with what we do we don't use tend to use recipes very often we just throw things together out here catherine's husband she married a man who must have recipes and he goes by the recipes. And so she's run into a different thing. And then Kristen, our second, who is also married, her and her husband enjoy trying different recipes. And everybody's got different dietary needs in our family. Uh, and this living plate uh, scenario has different diets that you can pick. And what did we pick for me? I, I've been talking to you as a dietitian. You've been helping me out. And I can't remember, we talked about a different couple of different scenarios that might help me with the inflammation and different things. And what did we finally choose? Yeah, we actually chose the anti-inflammatory plan because that's actually a plan that it would be good for anybody really. Um, right. It's a great starting place because it doesn't have any specific allergies in it. I believe it's gluten-free, uh, but there's plenty of gluten-free recipes that you can choose to put in there. And, and yeah, so that's why we chose that one for you because you don't have, you didn't have any specific dietary needs. And some of the dietary plans recommend that you go through your doctor first. And that one is not one that requires that. Okay. Okay. Well, um, like, whenever I worked at the chiropractor, uh, a lot of times the chiropractor really recommended to people the anti-inflammatory uh, diets because those were at that's the primary thing whenever you've got the hurting shoulder or the aching hips or something usually what she was finding was that those were primarily inflammation that was causing the issue and if her patients could just bring that inflammation down then it was easier to adjust them. They recovered better from accidents and there was just a whole slew of positive effects if they would get on that anti-inflammatory diet and just bring the inflammation down in their body. Yeah, one of the key things about the American diet is it's really high in omega-6 fats, which are, high, which are essential but they tend to be too high in the American diet. And when they're too high, then they become pro-inflammatory and more omega threes and monos is what people need. And that anti-inflammatory kind of fills that in because it's more plant-based than the okay. traditional American diet. It's not all plant-based. Like you can choose meats and stuff, but it's, yeah, it's more plant-based than the traditional American diet. Okay. Hey, tell us a little bit about this RX plate and why you chose it. Are you going to share your screen? I, I will. I Do you want me to share it while you're? Yeah, that might be good okay. just because it helps me so that I can communicate it better. So basically, I chose it because it's written. It's OK. The program is was originally started by dietitians and chefs. So because registered dietitians are held to a certain standard and we're trained and we have the we're actually authorized or professional, it's considered a valid thing for us to do meal planning for people like a, a coach a trainer they're not supposed to do meal planning that's not that's outside their scope of practice 
Um, they can give general ideas. They can say, hey, you know, go into my plate and, you know, but they're not supposed to be doing meal prep. So the dietitian knows enough um, that I can, like I said, this is a very flexible diet plan. I like it because you can add recipes, you can edit recipes. For example, our family doesn't love kale. And so um, on one of the recipes, quick shrimp, and it was ca a kale saute. So we switched it to spinach. And then I just went in, copied the recipe, renamed it quick shrimp and spinach. And so now there's a spinach option and a kale option for some people that like kale. So you can go in and do, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, you can go you can in and that. change these. And, yeah. and you were saying this is all USDA approved yes. and everything. I, so yes, it's, I, I can go in and like change some of these. You've got breakfast, you can lunch, move them around and too. dinner. Yeah, they can, they can be moved. Like I would tend to want to do a uh, trail mix for a snack. Um, mm -hmm. I do eggs for breakfast every morning. Mm -hmm. We've got chickens, so we've got egg, uh, egg things. And so, so it's really easy to move these things around and do this. The yogurt I would probably do for a snack. And then I, you've got a dietitian overseeing it. So right. already, this program is, is only um, offered by people licensed to do meal planning, which would be MDs, nurse practitioners, physician's assistants, NDs. I'm not sure about chiropractors, um, but you have, so you had to apply for the program. And I go in and I can watch over what someone's doing. And if there's something, any red flags anywhere or whatever, or if the person's having a hard time, like why, you know, how many calories do I need? Um, then we can arrange a meeting and we can talk about that and then try to make, you know, the percentages match up um, with the individual person's needs. So that's a really good thing about it. And like I said, I, I, I can add recipes. You can copy a recipe and edit it, which is kind of the same thing as adding a recipe. I think you can. Um, have you tried doing that yet? I haven't tried doing that. So take, I, take one of the recipes, um, like the soft boiled egg, pull that one up, just click on it. Yes. Yes. Okay. It isn't this neat. So copy and edit. Yeah. So it won't let you just edit. I think I have the option to edit. I don't remember, but copy and edit. Um, so let's say you don't want it soft oh, boiled. Right. You want it hard boiled. Okay. Then you can rename it hard boiled. Well, and if we wanted to change the servings, how many Oh, well, you don't have, oh, you can do that. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. You can do that. You can do that without editing. You can do that without copying the recipe. That's something oh, okay. you always can do you in a recipe do. is change the serving size. Right. Right. So, so yeah. So this is like a really basic recipe. If you wanted to add something, you know, with um, I don't know, green onions on top. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I, I could okay, okay. add ingredients. And then, yes. And then when you add the ingredients, it gives right. it has a search. Um, and it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. It, it usually finds what you're looking for. Um. I keep wanting to hit, I keep wanting to hit backspace. Um, so like if you entered um, apple, uh, tomatoes, try tomatoes, like where it says to make ingredient. Oh, I was gonna add salt. You're gonna add something, salt. I thought that would be an easy one to do. Yeah. And then right. um, search, so they can search down here where it says search. See, so yeah, below the salt, I can't show. okay below down below where it says search you got extra oh, search oh i so see if you click search then it gives you options you different can kinds of salt and if okay. you do that then it will give you it will update your nutrition okay so or whatever table salt or just whatever you need to do okay nice. yeah and then you go down and make sure you save it Okay, and then it, it does ask you this. It's like it's my recipe or whatever. But yeah, you could just say it's your recipe. Where is that? Down below at the bottom. It actually does that to the customer too. Okay, it's my recipe. Oh, okay. Recipe. Or whatever, or adapted from or whatever. Like oh, obviously boiled egg from. with yeah. okay. boiled eggs with salt is not okay. copyright. Yeah. Recipes aren't really copyrighted. Um, so it's just change them and everything. Oh, yeah, and we also have a whole recipe box see the here. vegetable taco soup there. Um, uh -huh. I, 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 you know, I like vegetables a lot, but I don't really like just vegetable soup. I don't know. It just, it's boring to me. So uh, what we did is we, I added ground meat. So 
we had leftover ground beef from the enchiladas that my husband made the other day and we just used the meat just added that into ground it. turkey or ground chicken is my my recommendation but it definitely makes it more interesting I like um, some of my the opinion. options like yeah um, the, the lentil mushroom burgers I mean even if you're not uh, vegan some of these it would keep a little bit longer than beef maybe and this is something that you could maybe pull out of the fridge or the freezer for like a, a cool easy and you know, just like you said, you don't like following recipes, but it gives you ideas. It does. It gives some ideas. So, and my I like ideas. favorite uh -huh. part, let's go back to the planner. My planner. Okay. I'm still getting used to this. And I'm like, for lunch, we, we've got heat going on. I love the way that we can uh, search. So, I like yeah, I having smoothies. I would even hear that it, what you were looking for, even though you said smoothie. <laughs> oh, smoothie. Mm. I did a smoothie. Oh, I knew what I was so doing. Yeah. And I got a new word for it. It's got like this pumpkin chai smoothie. And then that's to be perfect in the fall, huh? That'll be perfect yeah, for the it, fall. It seems, yeah. But then, I mean, it's got ice and it's cool. And, you know, maybe you're, you're wishing. Yeah. Well, you can get summer. pumpkin, canned <laughs> pumpkin year round. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, those are just some neat things. I don't, oh, non dairy milk when you said non, non dairy well, milk. Well, yeah, there's yeah. a lot and of really good goat's milk. Smoothies. So, I would be, I would be changing that. Um, Green orange cream sickle smoothie, yum. Yeah, that sounds really those. good. So, I, Catherine, I, do you have any <laughs> questions? Anything you want me to look up or anything? I mean, it, can, it um, has breakfast, lunch, snack, and dinner. And then you yeah. can add as many things to each one of these as you want to. And then at the top, you'll see it shows calories. Like she's only got the Greek yogurt and strawberries. So for the day, it's showing 219% right. cows. Um, I created an, I'm, I created a med, or I'm working on creating a Mediterranean plan, a signature meal plan, one that I made from scratch. And I'm finding that, wow, this stuff's high in fat. Like, and so, I'm gonna, like I said, I can adjust the help with adjusting that. Yeah, that um, changes. But Every time you know, you add if, if you have a goal that. of 30, most people aren't on a specifically low fat diet right now. Usually the recommendation now is more low saturated fat, mm -hmm. plant based saturated is healthier, but usually 54 is a little high. So, um, but I am discovering that. Um, but if you, if you want to be on a lower fat diet or a higher carb diet, which I recommend no less than a hundred a day for carbs. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, my, my husband and I have been talking about trying to get more onto like the Mediterranean diet, um, yeah. or so an anti-inflammation diet. And what I'm really needing is something, especially in the evenings, um, and probably lunches mornings are pretty basic. You know, we keep it like eggs or something like that. And, uh, occasionally we'll do like a cream of wheat thing. And, um, so we kind of rotate our mornings pretty good, but keep it basic. And then lunchtime is where I will tend to forget to feed myself. I'll feed the baby something and, um, but then I won't have anything prepared for myself. And then I've got to run and go do things. And then evening times, uh, supper is our big meal that we have together. And um, usually I'm needing something pretty easy to put together or that I know a couple of weeks in advance what I'm going to be making so that I already have the ingredients ready to go in it. And um, that way I'm not so caught off guard because I get easily distracted or something <laughs> blows up with work here at home. Right, and right. Well, to... and the nice thing about this too, once you get all the recipes where you want for the week, then you can print out this grocery list. Yeah, I was going to say something too. If you, how often you shop is an important point. So if you're not able to shop more than once every couple of weeks, then there's, you know, there's other you can options. Change this. There's yeah. like a, what's called the pantry plan. Oh, um, okay. and, I, and what that basically is, is like for people who have 
uh, well, not everybody. Some people, there's, it's called a food desert. I think you guys pretty much live in a food desert right now. If you don't have a grocery store within five miles of where you live, that, you know, how that's, that's considered a food, food desert. Oh my goodness. Food desert. There's actually food there deserts in Portland. And Can then whenever it? half the shelves are, are so practically that's an, that's an issue because as you know, the, the fruits and vegetables go bad really fast. It's, it's yes. such a drag. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but the, so there is, yeah, there's, you, you can, it's like I said, the dietitian is going to be there for you, with you. Like if you have questions about like, what do I, or a specific, this is what I have to eat and I need someone to help me put this in, you know, together or whatever. Um, so I would have to share my screen if I can, and I could show you like some of the options that I'm talking about. There's a, also also the other thing is some of the stuff that was going through my head when you were talking is afternoon is a good time for smoothies. If you like smoothies and if you like have favorite fruits, you can freeze them and then have them in bags. And then when it's time to have your smoothie, then you just throw them all together in the, in the blender and fruits, fr fruit, um, like bananas, when they start to get overripe, you can just stick them in a banana, in a bag, in a plastic bag in the freezer and they'll last a couple of weeks. Oh yeah. Uh, and that, that's what I use and, for the and, smoothies. Yeah. I even did that. Uh, for some reason I had bought some frozen strawberries um, and they had got left out. They hadn't got put up. And so I just, they were all thawed out. I put them in ice cube trays and put a little water in them and then, and refroze them that way. That way I can just pull out those few cubes and put them in with the smoothie. And I've got the strawberries there automatically. And I did that with, I made some green smoothie with the kefir because I do a uh, homemade kefir with the goat's milk that we get. And I did it with some of the fresh greens that we had, blended it up and then put it in ice cube trays. And I've got a whole bag full of ice cubes that that I've got green smoothie ready to go that I can throw in with my, my protein powder and whatever I'm doing for the day and have that ready to go. So yeah, there's lots of ways that we can keep that stuff a little bit longer. We've also okay, so learned that if you put it in glass with a little bit of water, it keeps longer, the greens do. Okay, so this having is, the tower oh, sorry. is good. <laughs> sorry, it's hard to tell when it's sometimes because of the delay, I think. Okay, so this is the pantry power um, meal plan. Okay. And it looks like, because you're, are you in, like in your 20s, Catherine? Yes, uh, well, <laughs> no, I was, She's I'm in my now. 30s now. I was, now. I was gonna say, you now. probably easily need 2000 a day. I, um, you know, so I don't think that would put you over at all, but this is an example, like carrots oh. don't go bad very quickly. Apples last a while, bananas can be tricky. Um, but if, like I said, you could freeze them. Because or if I just I'm picky about bananas. I do not when they start to get even a tad overripe. I just don't care for them. Although they're still good in cereal, but just to eat one. Um, so yeah, whenever they get too ripe, I usually like to put them in, say freeze them, and then save them for banana bread season. Yeah. So this is just some examples. Like, what do you like to eat? Well, um, <laughs> none of us. Oh, say hello. None of us are really big veggie fans right now. Uh, <laughs> um, my husband and I'll um, eat just about anything if they it's probably like some of the stir fry, maybe. Yeah, he's we, not a big, like he's not a big veggie person. I I really try to keep fresh in our diet as much as possible, um, just mostly for the health benefits, not because we really like it oh no so they'd probably well, do i was thinking like for main dishes like what you like and... to eat for oh meatballs okay yeah, like this one here actually i i changed it <laughs> this is another one i changed okay because i just do not like kale okay um yeah i spinach, can't stand kale and spinach you know really quick throw it in um so this is a recipe for meatballs here you go this is super easy now you don't have to like um, you don't have to use ground turkey, obviously. Um, something. I love that it's got some of the Epicure uh, yeah. seasoning mixes because those are so good. Those yeah, so but, good. but of course you don't have to have them. This is a really good one. Right. We have this one. Um, I know it's a really good one. 
um, I think that's where their real strength is, is in the actual like mixes, their, their flavors. And of course, really out here in Oklahoma, we would be substituting the turkey for beef. And then of course, exactly. That's more so, readily available. But. Right. Sometimes substituting turkey for doing it the other way, like there are some recipes that just, in my opinion, don't do well with turkey, like meatloaf. In my opinion, meatloaf just needs to have beef in it. <laughs> <laughs> I've made turkey meatloaf and I didn't care for it. Um, but when you, when you're starting with ground turkey, beef is usually easily, yes. Um, as lean as possible, but you know what? You guys have local beef. And I don't know if I told you this story, but just in the last week or so, my husband made this ground beef, long story short, it was 20%. It was one of those sausage ones, you know, like you buy them in the, oh, yeah, yeah, which is like really cheap ground beef okay right. which probably has pink slime in it all kinds of lovely things <laughs> in it um he made the enchiladas and i did not like them at all i was like okay i'm gonna eat these because it's my on my plate but i'm not eating them again like if it was healthy and i didn't like it i would eat it but because it was 20 percent ground beef with god only knows what in it right i'm like i'm sorry honey i'm not eating these anymore so so there were this, these burritos in the freezer that also had 20 percent ground beef in them but they, they, we saved them because the meat was so good. It was like, I don't understand it. So like after eating this, these enchiladas, you know, and I'm thinking about the burritos we froze to save them uh -huh. and the meat was so good back in May, sitting there trying to figure out like, why does the one, the you difference? know, taste yeah. so much better? And then my husband tells me, well, that's because we got this ground beef from the local farmer. Ah, oh, okay. Big difference. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting because it's, a, it is, it's like, yeah, you if see, you can buy eggs. your meat and your eggs and your milk locally from a local grower, local producer, it's much better. But, you know, we do the best we can with what we can get, too. Yeah. So, yeah. and, uh, but yeah, these, these recipes, and really, this is a pretty simple recipe. It, it's, and did you it's say your not husband a hard recipe. Does, Catherine, does your husband like to cook? He yes, he loves to cook. Okay, he so you can love to do that together and try new recipes. And he's he's one of those funny men that like to watch the cooking channels on YouTube. And My husband does <laughs> well, too. so there's a little bit of a culture shock, um, even for me. Okay, because my husband is a comfort food cook. Okay, and I think our tastes change. Okay, as we change our diet, they really do. Like yes. if you get used to the comfort food, then some of this other stuff is going to be like, oh, that looks weird. That sounds gross. I don't know. Um, good example, seeing the chia seeds and the hemp seeds and everything. Well, I finally brought, bought some and they were so good. I could just eat them in a tip. I was like, put them uh -huh. in a tablespoon and eat them. Mm -hmm. They sound weird. They don't sound like they'd be good. Um, but we had like the combo because chia seeds are expensive. Um, right. Which is another thing. If it's if it calls for chia seeds, you can use hemp seeds. You can use flax seeds. You can you know right, right. easily mm -hmm. replace them. Um, I'm wondering about slow cooker because I'm definitely planning on adding some. Uh, that's something I've been wanting to add. I am I am not a huge slow cooker fan, um, but it I'm is so much easier whenever things whenever it's hot. For one, we live in the south, y'all. And well, I get said, that's there. something you can cook when you're earlier in the day when you have more energy. So that's the way I am. We like, were yeah, actually talking about taking our Instapot out to the greenhouse and hooking it up out there so it's not heating up the house inside. We don't have central heat and air here. So, um, and I'm like, well, oh, well, that's a good idea. We'll take the Instapot out there and we'll just do some stuff out there. Because I got all these recipes. Cooker. There's a bunch of them. There are. Cooking. There's a bunch of really good looking um, recipes. And I'm going to add more. I'm telling you, I just. I just barely got a hold of this. This is like what I've been waiting for because I've been wanting to help people. But coming up with this whole thing by myself on my own is just. Can you oh, sure, go I can do it, but... and show us all the different diets that they yeah, have available sure. on this? Yeah, because I, I was amazed. Yeah, plus I, there, I can make there were plus a lot. You can have an individual plan created just for you. Right. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I it's uh, it's called. Yeah, like I said, I started making one. I'm not sure where that's at under here. Oh, wow. I mean, um, for diabetes and yeah. I have um, the Mediterranean meal plan that I started doing, which I was like, hmm, how come there's so much fat and so little carbs? I'm like, 
wow, I have it triggered to that. But does that about- like make sense though? People in the Mediterranean are maybe, uh, I mean, it's, it, it's very really similar to anti-inflammatory. And a lot carbohydrates of help you uh, hold heat, right? So you would want less carbs if you were in the desert. Well, you just don't want too few. That's all. Like, I, right, like right. you don't want, like I put less than a hundred. No, less, not, if it, it's like, I get an exclamation point if I go below hundred when I was doing this, but this is an example. I was trying to keep it around 1600 or below. And I was working on it last night and um, I want to make sure there's something high in vitamin A every day. And, but you know, this is what I have started putting together. Um, and that's another thing is that you make something once and you can, you can serve it multiple times during the day. Like when we made the quick shrimp, there's three of us and we had it for two days. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so leftovers are great. Um, um, here's, a, here's another thing too, because you know, I've been trying to watch my blood sugar. I'm not diabetic, but I struggled with hypoglycemia. And so I can go through and we've kind of done this and I can make my little menu and fill it out on what I think I would do. And then you can go in as the dietitian and look at that and give me tips on, I'm not sure you're adding enough of this in your diet. You know, you've got quite a bit of this in a particular day. You might want to, you know, like you were saying with them, making sure that you've got enough vitamin A and different things. And you've, uh, you've helped me to like balance things better because my idea on blood sugar and keeping my blood sugar straight was protein, protein, protein. And you're like, but don't eat it. Your brain needs sugar. So that, that helped. Yeah, I think it's like glu- it's glucose. Glucose is what our brain needs. Right. Virtually everything is broken down to glucose. Okay. Or fat. Okay. If you if you don't need the glucose, it stores it as fat. Um, and cat and fat is the least efficient. Okay. As or I don't want to, the word is I'm not sure if efficient is the right word. Fat is the least like it takes the least amount of energy for your body to burn fat. I mean to digest fat. <laughs> so that provides. To over twice as many calories per gram and of your body uses less energy to I think metabolize that's why it avocados have gotten so but, popular and protein are protein it's is easy to add to the diet and get that good fat oh because people avocados. like because we like fat and it helps yeah. make more and I, I add like avocados to my sandwich so if this you know looking at this right like okay um i don't eat much squash like that wait spaghetti squash so I would probably not make that one. Um, so, so if you I, can just ex- I, and this, exit or in, in replace it. Or yeah. yeah, if you want some other kind of egg thing, you're looking for ideas. For your eggs. mic is hiding or something. Where, where'd your microphone go? Catherine turned off. Debbie? Okay. What? Your microphone. What about it? It's, it's covered up or something. Where is it on your headphones or where is it? You sound awful. No, I don't know. I'm oh, there. I have... Okay. There. Okay. These aren't very expensive. Okay. <laughs> um, that's okay. So, and that's another thing, right? If you have it in stock, whether you already have it in stock is an issue. Um, it's a little bit of a learning curve, but you know, the, the, like, what would you, what, what sounds good right now? Catherine. Catherine. You're muted. What plan is this? I forgot. Oh, this is a flex plan. You're this muted. is a one. You're, okay. <laughs> um, so I, I'm really wanting um, some more recipes that include vegetables because I am craving more vegetables. I try not to keep too many of them around because if we don't cook them immediately out here, they, they go rotten so fast. So I usually like to get the vegetables the day of, if possible. And then I'm wanting to include some more meats. Um, it, meat has gotten where it's really expensive. So we're trying not to use as much of it. So I'm kind of wanting to find a nice little balance where I'm not letting vegetables go to waste and spending a lot of money there, but getting those essential nutrients. And then I'm it's getting in the meat. The oh, what? I- um this soup here i don't know if you like cumin she's very cumin happy 
Okay. I'm like, I don't like human and everything. And there's no way I'd use I, that. Yeah. But, I'm not a huge fan of so, human. We had it one time and I couldn't kiss my husband for a solid week oops. afterward. <laughs> he just stinks so bad. So, but cumin is easy to leave out. Yeah. So like this recipe, this is the one that I added the ground meat to because I, I, like I said, I love vegetables, but soup is a really good way to use vegetables that aren't real fresh. Okay. Um, this one is, you know, calls for zucchini, carrots, but of course you can mix and match. This is just, again, like red bell peppers are more expensive than green. Um, but the one thing about pepper, peppers are really high in vitamin C, like excellent source of vitamin C. They were on sale at the grocery store. Yeah, they're, 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 they're in season right now. So red bell peppers, or it could be green or yellow. Um, green, of course, are a little more bitter. Um, right, right. Yeah, um, we and, love we love those peppers. We love eating those. Good. Yeah. So that's, that's a great way to get vitamin C, especially because this has tomatoes in it. And you got your carrots, which is vitamin A. Um, I would suggest, I, I remember looking at the sodium content on this and I was like, what, mm-hmm. why is it so high? That's kind of, high. Uh, well, that's I've also bad, been really wanting to work in fish. I don't know a lot of fish recipes that aren't deep fat fried. <laughs> because I live in the South, y'all. Yeah, so I've been perfect. trying to learn good fish re- recipes that don't just leave it tasting like gum, fishy well, tasting like gum in your mouth. Like um, I, I if it's well cooked, I've eaten all kinds of fish. I like all kinds. Um, fish is super easy. You just have to know what seasonings to use. Um, okay. One of my favorite seasonings is thyme. Um, not excuse me, not time, dill on my like salmon. Dill, okay. Dill and butter. And now actually I have a sauce that I make that that I that I got just from Be- Better Homes and Gardens years and years ago. And it has butter, lemon, and garlic and um dill sauce. So you typed but, in salmon. Now scroll down and see how many so um I mean, they're, making they're... it. It's super it can be grilled, but grilled a pain. My husband doesn't even grill it because you gotta have a special thing. Uh, it doesn't matter what you like. You like tarragon. We don't care for that. It's like licorice tasty. Um, I mean, there's quite a bit there. All kinds yeah, of so ideas. this is the salmon. And see, but the thing about, like, my husband doesn't like salmon. Right. Um, I'm trying to think which one I was going to make. Actually, there's another, there's a cookbook that I'm giving, a little cook thing that I, cookbook thing that I gave away to my subscribers um, recently that has a salmon recipe in it with mango salsa. And you so that's actually, sure give me that link so I can share that. Sure. In the description. Um, and it doesn't have to be salmon. It can be cod. So my husband doesn't like salmon. So he bought himself orange ruffy. Um, we live in Portland, Oregon. So we have access to a lot of stuff. Metropolitan area. It's like, it's so ridiculous it's... almost. Um, I'm not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, the only thing that really irritates me is how the manufacturers try to trick you all the time like shrinking the size of everything um you know it's like the noodle rot and like the pasta roni that we don't really buy that much anymore this is like this big now <laughs> yeah, yeah it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller so they yeah. can keep selling it for a dollar <laughs> most people yeah. don't realize if it if it's still the same price they don't realize it's well it's i love to go to the dollar tree sometimes because like oh look at the cute little teeny tiny little laundry detergent <laughs> Oh my goodness. It's oh great if all you have is a dollar, right? To spend. It's perfect, right? And you just have just enough for today. <laughs> and so, the little tiny toilet papers, those are really good. Right. Anyway. I, I just, I really think this is a good option for like uh, families. Like Catherine married a man with bonus children. So she got extras that she gets on weekends and in the summer. So her, their uh, menu needs to change when the extras are there, you know, and when you've got a growing family, and then if you've got different dietary needs, because there's like gluten-free, there's, I mean, there's, there's so many different options as far as diet with this, and then having that added convenience of a dietitian, a registered dietitian to help, because that's something we, that, that we don't have much of out here is somebody who you can actually talk to. I know when my father-in-law 
uh, got diagnosed and he had the high blood pressure and then he got diagnosed with diabetes. I was trying to find a dietitian to ask, okay, what should his diet be? You know, what do I need to do with type one diabetes? That's different than my hypoglycemia thing. And uh, it was really hard to find that. I had to look up the information myself to be able, and then I took it to the doctor and I said, hey, how's this look? And he's like, well, this is better than I eat. So anyway. Um, type one diabetes, did you say? Type two. He had oh, type two, type two okay. which is different. I was more familiar with type one diabetes at that time, you know, so it, it's. Yeah, because type two can be treated with diet. Right, right. And his, um, and his easily was. And as a matter of fact, once they got the blood sugar or the blood pressure under control, the diabetes went away. So there's that. But that's awesome. Yeah. My yeah. husband's blood sugar is much, not nearly as bad as it probably would be if he was just on his own, um, eating whatever he wanted without right. me reminding him. Did you know my husband used to think that when he cooked fat in the oven, that it would evaporate? <laughs> that's one of my favorites. I like Oh, I wish. Oh, I wish. That idea. Okay. Oh, that'd be cool. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Now I will ask something. Whenever you cook alcohol, like wine in something, does the alcohol evaporate? Um, not as much as people think. Okay. Okay. Um, because my husband has a real problem with that. We don't, we don't drink alcohol at all. And I've got alcohol in um, my family. So we're cool with that. I don't remember the percentage, but it's definitely not. It's not totally a, a wife's tale, but it definitely takes a while before the alcohol would be cooked out. So if you um, put alcohol in your hot coffee, it's probably not going that ew, far. Gross. Okay. Yeah. My dad had pancreatitis, and so he can't. He Oops. doesn't even want to touch it with a tempo pole now because it wasn't even related to drinking. I'm pretty sure it was his diet. They were out on the road eating fast food all the time. He had two bouts of it, acute pancreatitis, and of course the doctors are like, "Oh no, that has nothing to do with what you eat." I know you're secretly drinking and we don't know about it. I'm like, no, I know my dad. Anyway, I know, right? Wow. My mom said he was also taking a lot of Tylenol and stuff too during that time for his pain. Wow. Um, but so this recipe, I wanted to mention, as you can see, I hearted it because it looks really good to me. Um, I really like this one. Uh, the interesting thing about the foil is that you could do this and ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator and then when it's time to eat, cook. We you lost know. your audio again. Did it fall back? Sorry. That's okay. You got it now? There it is. Yep. I don't know what's up with that. This isn't old enough to be doing that. Of course, I did drop it a couple of times. <laughs> it was such a great idea. Okay. Well, anyway, so this one, I don't know about you, but orange zest makes things taste delicious. I mean, mm, orange zest is just better just than orange. I hardly ever think about it. I never get around to it. I'm a lazy cook. I'm so really if I made cook. this, I don't know if I'd use the gender necessarily. Um, Again, you can pick and choose. I love bok choy. I don't know if you ever had it, but it is really good. That I have, uh, um, and I can't stand asparagus. But I love the idea, but, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, you could use green beans. Um, well, and this is showing it in foil, so you wouldn't have to do it in the oven. You could probably do it. In well, it's the, got parchment paper too. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure how parchment paper works on a grill, but I do well, know that that's what that is on the inside. Is parchment oh, paper. Okay. Okay. Maybe because some people are uncomfortable with the aluminum foils wrecked on there. Some, I know okay. some people are ish, have issues with. I, um, I bet a person could do it on the grill. Parchment oil. paper will help soak up extra excess oil. Oh, um, okay. But there's not much oil in this um, because the cod is very low in fat, which means it doesn't have very many omega threes. So if you're looking for omega threes, salmon is a really good choice. Um, okay. How, if you have the choice, um, wild is better than farmed. Right, um, if you have the choice. So, yeah. Um, but. Well, and I, I personally think I like the taste of wild better than farmed. I've had both uh, whenever I was visiting a friend in Idaho and I, the difference was astounding. And I, I really preferred the wild. It's it redder. Was so good. Um, uh -huh. If you go to Costco, they show, they have both of them. And of course it's more expensive and it's really bright. Like the color is really red compared to the other, mm -hmm. um, but salmon of any kind. Right. I mean, within reason, obviously. Right. Right. It's a really good source of uh, omega threes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's is the anti I did fat. a price check. It was some of the cheaper, uh, fish that I could get. Um, it, wow. it kind of, 
yeah, it kind of fluctuates a little bit, but last I checked, salmon was the cheaper that I could get in a large package, basically. So as you can see, this little dollar, this thing here, that means leftover. So okay. that that's something like here's their first time they make it, make it here or whatever. And then you could, oh, by the way, remember Donnie, I said you could change serving yes. sizes there really easy. The servings. Okay. Nice. So three if, oranges, if you've three got a large spoons. family, you can jack yeah. that up. And, um, and then it shows up on your, on and then you can tell, you well. can mark this as a leftover or not. Okay. Okay. That's what that little baggie is for. This um, is now the, the trickiest such... thing about fish is it doesn't stay fresh long. Um, this, this, this is just such a neat resource. And uh, we did find out that you can access it on your phone. It's not a separate app or anything, you just pull it up on your Safari or your Google Chrome or whatever it is on your phone. Oh, you can use it on your mobile. Yes, and you can, so um, if you forget to print out a, a grocery list, you can pull up your menu on your phone and you can see what it is that you need. You can scroll through that and see what you need. And so yeah, the, this living plate, is just, I think it's really neat. And option. then almond flour, you, I don't think I would use almond flour. I mean, I don't think that's a big deal. I think the way, for, for, for purposes of switching out flours, things like this, it's not that important which flour it is. Um, if you're talking about a cake that you want to rise so much or bread or something like right. that, then, then the, the kind of flour you use can make a huge difference. But if all you're just using it for is breading, um, yeah, it's right. not as important that it's a certain flour. This is just because um, I've noticed this diet plan is very low in dairy and all of them actually pretty much are low in dairy. Like, and I think it's because milk nowadays is not whatever they're doing to the cows. Like they're feeding them, they're cloning them. They're, you know, doing really a lot of feeding them like a bunch of garbage that like literally this stuff called crab waste silage well, and that the, they feed them. And, and all, they were doing that when the, I was in school 20 years ago. And acting like, oh, it was in the like food technology the magazines. They were doing studies they saying, oh, you them. still taste yeah. good. You still get just as much meat. And it's like, that's not the point. <laughs> right, right. But if you're kosher, you know, of course, kosher people probably don't buy the street. But yeah, so you, um, and not a lot of dairy, but that doesn't mean you can't add it. Right, right. Um, on your own. This is just, I think this is a really neat uh, resource. I, what do you think, Catherine? I I am really liking the look of this and I think it would be um it would simplify my life a lot over here for sure is this something you only get on the computer or can it come on a phone app as well well like I said if you're um there's no app there's you no can app access you can it, like, access on the mobile. It on like I I, yeah. I tested it because when I'm in my own account my dietitian account I can't do much but when I'm logged in as a customer because I, yeah, I'm one of my, I can I'm one pull of my it up clients. on my phone when I'm, on the, when I'm, I'm like oh wow you can like totally pull it up like in, I was in the store I was in the um I don't know if you saw the thing I posted about the the spinach and the mushrooms and all that I was in the kitchen that night and I was pulling stuff up on my phone like oh yeah. I have uh oh we, for, we forgot I forgot to put bro broccoli on the list my son likes certain vegetables okay he likes broccoli he like he's okay with carrots carrots take too long to cook sometimes but he likes mushrooms <laughs> And there are a bunch of mushrooms in there. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I know I'll make mushrooms, you know? So I looked up a recipe and the recipe called for thyme and a little olive oil. And that was pretty much it. And garlic. And I, and I made the mushrooms. And usually in the past I would make them, I would just put oil of oil and butter and garlic and, the, you know, and then it would be swimming in oil and, or whatever. These mushrooms were really good. Um, the only thing was he said he didn't like the thyme that much, but he still ate. The mushrooms so you can you know that what i that's why i was asking about your husband if he likes cooking because a lot of these recipes you could just try them because you'd be surprised yeah, just pull them up. culture shock like oh that's weird you know i'm not used to that i'm not used to you know sweet potato pizzas or <laughs> right right or you know yeah. but a lot of that stuff is better or tastes way better than you expect or it may be gross and you're like okay i'm not eating that again you know you just right yeah or I don't like kale, yeah. I like spinach, or I don't have this available, but I have this other thing. Um, and anyway, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. My this. husband and I like trying things out. 
and I am going to be having, I am going to be offering cooking class too. Eventually part of this program includes masters. Like that's what these are here. The mealtime method diets go with a mealtime method. I'm still working on that um, for future reference. And then there's okay. like other things on here too that I haven't had. Like I said, this is the one I'm working on creating. I can create. And oh, and another thing, if you pick one diet and you decide, or one meal plan, you decide it isn't the right match or you want to try another one, it's not a big deal. Um, so the meal plans are really inexpensive. Um, the customizable one right now is $13.30 a month. So I, I, it was 19 and I brought it down to $13.30. The non-customizable one is only 9 but you can't really change anything on it, I don't think. Um, I haven't had anybody test that one yet, but that's the impression I get. And then, you know, there's a three day, if you sign up, there's three day trial. Okay, cool. Um, well, we need to make sure that we get all of the links in the description for yes. people to be able to visit. And of course, uh, visit, let's see, what is your website again? Well, the direct website to Living Plate, um, if I no, give you your, your website. Well, I don't have a connection to, to Living Plate okay. right now, but my website is homeschoolingdietitianmom.com. I'm working on a page okay. right now. Okay. And then you've got that freebie that you talked about earlier. So we need yeah, the immune support. Oh, well, the immune support pack is the one that I'm offering new subscribers okay. right now. Okay, yeah. And sometimes okay. other stuff pops up too, like lunch is for kids because sometimes those opt-ins well, just know, you have, change no matter how hard you try. You have I a change. ton of information on your blog. So, yeah, I, do. I mean, yeah. and you've got all kinds of printables. Oh, yeah, I've been doing have... healthy recipe makeovers. So we got it, chicken yeah. parmesan, pizza, um, grand slam breakfast. To help the children start cooking yes. children starting so you can make that into a, a homeschool class and lots of free stuff teaching them yeah lots of free stuff and then some purchase stuff and just all kinds of resources so we will make sure that those are in the uh in the description so you can get a hold of her and you can look at this and see what all is available and i just think this is a really neat resource and it was really worth sharing so. Yeah, and usually what I will do is if the person wants a specific, um, like this one, which one, if you were going to try one, what one would you want, Catherine? Let me see here. Um, what is the 28 day refresh? Mm. I think it's some kind of a cleanse or something. A cleanse. That might um, be a good start for Stephen and I. The only thing is, is normally it's recommended that you check with your doctor before you go on something like that. So let me just um, look at, see what it says on the outside here. Cause, but then I'm, I'm there, I'm here. Um, okay. Great way to get your metabolism humming and jump to starting your health. It contains selected low glycemic recipes aimed at stabilizing blood sugar, maintaining a healthy weight, normalizing hormones, promoting healthy digestion, and reducing inflammation associated with many chronic diseases. That sounds like good. At the end of this four-week plan, you will automatically begin receiving the anti-inflammatory plan to support you in maintaining healthy habits. Okay. So that would be, yeah, sure. That would be a good one Again, to kind of kick off with. I'm thinking um, you still have access to the, a lot of the food anyway. Um, so let me send you the link. I just was on there, wasn't I? Silly me. Okay. You want me to put in the chat? Sure. Okay. Um, how do you do? Can you do that? Oh, you can't. There it is. Ah, okay. So it's it's a really easy easy thing to do. We'll make sure these links are are down in the description, 
so that people can check this out. And, uh, oh, you want me to put all the stuff in the link? What do, well, what do you I, say I'll, I'll oh, you'll make sure. The, yeah, so, um, I'll make sure. So I was going to wrap up. Was there anything you wanted to, uh, you guys wanted to close with? Um, I'm really excited to show this to Stephen and uh, look into it further for sure. I think it would really simplify my life as far as meal planning. Uh, definitely getting some healthy meals that are giving us the nutrition that we need into our diet regularly. I know there's a lot of good meal plans out there, but what's cool about this one is it's or like it, you take it with you. You don't necessarily have to print anything. You can, but you don't have to. A lot of the times when you get the meal plan stuff, it's it's digital, but you it's, you know, and then we buy it, we forget about it or whatever. Like this is kind of a, and then like I was saying, the, the mobile device, um, I was gonna say, oh, when you do the grocery shopping, you can actually tell it you only want to shop for one day or two days or three days. Um, it, do you live close to a grocery store? Uh, kind of, we don't, use, we live a little closer within like a couple of miles of a local grocery store, but prices there tend to be really expensive. So we usually drive the 45 minutes to the Walmart, the only right. Walmart in our area. So that's the only problem with doing it every three days. Cause she actually recommends shopping for more than three days at a time. Mm -hmm. Right. My husband, that's like his favorite thing to do. Okay. Is go shop grocery shopping. I am not kidding. I'm like very blessed in that area. Um, so it's kind of funny because I'm like, um, you should only be going to the store once a week. And now we're <laughs> saying, now we're like, oh, okay. So now he has an excuse to go to the store more often. If it's uh, yeah, my husband thing. loves to go grocery store shopping too. <laughs> too also, yeah, yes. that's good. Oh, cool. They, he, they he's got, very got to get together and chat. They need to do that. They need to do well, that. He doesn't do it for the social. Well, I, I'm going to go food. ahead before we get too terribly <laughs> sidetracked. I'm going to let everybody go. Um, and this is Donita and Catherine and our special guest, Debbie Canyon, the registered dietitian. And thank you for, for joining us today. Make sure to subscribe and share this out to others who may need some menu planning help. And uh, you can check us out on prairiedestrail.com and I'll have all of the fun links uh, in the description. And we're hoping today's pioneer families overcome the disasters of life with faith-based principles to become flexible and fulfilled in homemaking, homeschooling, and homesteading. And remember, you can make it through the dust storms of life with God's divine help. And if I can figure out how to close, there we go.